Hi, this is Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending July the 23rd, 2021. Well, a nice ending to the week. Started off pretty shaky. Uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ ended up breaking above double tops, so they're not overbought yet. And so they're looking very bullish to end this week, going into next week. Uh, that's all supported by spectacular earnings. With respect to Q2 earnings, uh, with that scorecard, we now have results from a little over 100 of the S&P 500 members. That's roughly one out of five, or, or, or just a little bit over 20% of the index's total membership. Total earnings for those 103 or so members are up 117.6% from the same period last year. That's 18.9% to the good side in terms of higher revenues with 90.3% beating uh, earnings per share estimates, 85.4% beating revenue estimates. Mid caps are still struggling to keep up with large cap growth and small caps are downtrending right now because all the attention is being paid to the big guys, okay? So that leads us to the question was, do the bond markets have it wrong? Was the bond market wrong at the end of last week? And was the bond market wrong Monday when it dipped? The 10-year hit a low of 1.13%, but then as the week progressed, rebounded to its 200-day support of about 1.27. It banged up a little bit this morning on Friday, uh, 1.29, but uh, not yet recovering. You know, for a long time, we were very comfortable in that 130 to 150 range, hovering around that 150 range was where everybody liked to, to see it. Now, this is despite bank stocks coming in showing good earnings, okay? The problem is the markets apparently are viewing banks more as yield uh, instruments, okay? And so the market remains unimpressed with their, with their earnings. And all around this entire picture, you have to look at fixed income, which seems to be stuck around that 2%. So like I say, you got your 20 year stuck at 1.82%, 30-year, this is risk-free. This is treasuries, risk-free, 1.9. So what does that mean? If you're going to get anything above 2%, you're going to do so by adding tremendous, uh, well, comparatively, but probably tremendous risk. You're going to have to go into high yield or, or, or junk bonds because uh, sooner rather than later, uh, Fed's going to stop buying uh, those corporate bonds as well. All of this is going to start pulling back. Now, what to do? Okay, going to have to take appropriate steps to get around this one and a half to two percent risk spread. All right, if you're going to end up making six percent plus returns. So the question is whether you're in equities or whether you're in fixed income, what you're looking at. And fixed income, face it, face it, folks. I, I, Fixed income is pretty well dead for the time being. Why? Inflation's not the issue. Inflation seems to have abated. What should be your focus? The focus is on interest rates. Interest rates. Inflation was a, was a tantrum for a little bit. May come back and haunt us again. May end up being a little bit longer term, but we don't see that happening until we get the velocity increasing. No indication of that yet according to the data, but more importantly, the focus on the interest rates. And with this level of spending and the money that's in the system, can interest rate go up? Can the United States afford to do that? That's the next big battle. That's probably going to be the struggle as we approach Labor Day and move into the fall, is, is how are they going to raise the debt ceiling, uh, commensurate and, uh, with the goal of keeping interest rates at a level to support reopening the economy and we've still got these COVID variants going around because people refuse to get vaccinated but we even seeing the right wing, ultra right wing uh, publications now coming on uh, the internet and publishing pro-vaccination materials. So perhaps finally the rest of the nation is going to start moving uh, towards uh, vaccination and so that we can turn this pandemic as they planned as at the at the experts have planned all along from a pandemic and move into the endemic stages where it's just like the flu and every year we just get a booster shot or a flu a flu vaccine it's just another flu vaccine that's the goal that's where we want to be so in the meantime how do you measure all this risk because you know that we've got to be approaching a bubble we're getting multiple high 
earnings ratio uh, uh, multiples uh, is what I say. higher and higher uh, earnings multiples or er, price earnings multiples so at some point we've got a bubble how to deal with it because you know if interest rates are low you're not going to get anything out of fixed income so you got to be in equities but then there's that risk factor so what do you have to do to get around that two percent uh, spread there well there are other investment vehicles that are going to perhaps manage a risk more appropriately uh, for you risk management's what we do it's what it's all about and that's what it all boils down to at some point so you've also got to make sure you're covered on the downside risk yet retaining that upside potential for when the end comes i mean this is going to continue we we don't predict the markets we trade the markets as they present themselves to us but there are other aspects and especially with your sacred retirement money that you cannot leave exposed to that all right that risk out there so how are we going to cover downside risk there are a number of different investment alternative vehicles that we have available uh, for you and uh, and if you need some help don't hesitate to reach out to us, assetguidancegroup.com. Go there, fill out one of the forms, touch base with us. We'll be glad to get in, uh, in touch with you and set together introductory meetings, discovery meetings, so that we can get together and put together a custom fit plan suited for you. You'll love doing business with us. Just ask any of our other clients, and a couple of them are listed on assetguidancegroup.com slash about. Check it out. All right. Have a great time. Enjoy the rest of the summer, and I'll see you next week.